This one. Okay. Do I need it up here? Anywhere? Wherever you can clip it. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, we thought we would share a little bit of our story with you guys uh, today. Um, and just, um, you guys are our family. We've gotten to be here for a few years now. And so it's just kind of good. So thanks for the opportunity. But um, I need a mic. Okay, well, that would be good. Is that better? You're so soft-spoken. I don't know if anybody's ever said that to me before. <laughs> you should come to our house. <laughs> Shut up, Doug. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to step away for a minute. But this is, um, this is just a little sketch of our home in Bolivia in South America. And when we were on the contact team, that means uh, we were trying to reach a group of tribal people that had had no contact with anybody previously, okay? So we were looking, we were looking for the ET, okay? So the guys found some high ground in the jungle where there had been sightings of the ET. And so uh, the high ground meant that it wasn't flooded all the time, even though it was flooded in the rainy season. So there were five of us missionary couples here. Usually there were three of us there. Somebody was either on furlough or in the city doing medical or whatever. So, and then the guys planted a lot of bananas back here for when the UT would come out. This was what we, that's a gift rack with bananas hanging on there. It was simply two poles with a cross pole and we would hang bananas or machetes or pots or cloth on there to know. And they went out to the jungle and had more of these at various places where they thought the UT would travel because they were nomadic. So all of this, all of this is jungle around us. They built an airstrip here. And this is the river. It's called the Rio Vibora, but it means Nate River. And so they were able to carve out a little airstrip enough for the plane to land so that we didn't have to walk three days out to the nearest little Pueblo and then get, get vehicles to go into the city. So um, I'm going to be reading something, but it's going to mention Santa Cruz. So that was in that direction. Cochabamba, that was in the mountains of the Andes in a different direction. And Tambo is the school for missionary kids. Just so you guys have some reference points to these names. So while we were um, in Bolivia, we were there for just a couple of years. Do you want me to put it on? I did, I took it off, yeah, okay. Um, okay. So we were in Bolivia for um, a little while when Grant's mom and dad um, were going to come and visit. And to be honest, they were not very encouraging of our endeavor. Uh, we probably got more hassle from believers about what we were doing than we did from people who did not know the Lord. They were all like, oh, great, cool adventure. Believers were like, what do you mean you're taking six kids to the jungle? How are you going to provide for them? You know, they asked questions, and we were like, well, I don't know. God says he's going to take care of us. And he had put it on his, our hearts, and so we were being obedient. And there were, there were fears and a ton of unknowns, but we kept taking a one step at a time. So Grant's mom and dad came. Their names are Jean and Shirley. And when Grant's mom passed away a few years ago, as we were going through her stuff, we found this little blue notebook. And Grant's dad had um, taken, done a little journal of their visit to us in Bolivia many, many years ago. 
So when we read that, um, we thought it was interesting because it was from a perspective of believers who had lived in the U.S., hadn't been outside of the U.S. And so I'm going to read that, and then I've got a couple comments at the end. Okay. <clears throat> February 13th. Left Milwaukee one hour late. Flight to Miami, very rough due to storms below. Much turbulence. Left Miami, 8 p.m. Landed Caracas, Venezuela, about 1 a.m. Arrived Santa Cruz, 6.30 a.m. Checked through customs. Very crude setup. Mostly local people now. Derbies, gunny sacks, etc. 35-minute flight to Cochabamba. First sight of Andes Mountains. Met at airport by Grant and Alana, Matthew and Chip. Joyous reunion. Both boys shy at first. On to mission home. Horns, speed, wild drivers, no traffic control. Grant driving, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Arrived mission home. Beautiful green grass. Gorgeous blooming flowers of every kind. Met wonderful people we had read about. Makes you feel at home. Guest room next to Grant and Alana. Can't believe we are actually here. February 14, Grant and Alana took us to marketplace. Sights, smells, sounds indescribable. Filth, poverty abounds. Cut tires for shoes. Many no shoes. Potatoes, carrots, fruit in piles. Babies crying unattended. Skinned sheep heads, eyes still in sockets. Live chickens tied together, pigeons, rabbits, guinea pigs, puppies, witchcraft articles, dried dead birds, and lamb fetuses hanging. Back to mission home, very tired, took two hour siesta. Boys love us. Slept fitfully that night, couldn't get sights and sounds and smells out of my mind. February 15, girls coming in by plane today, hope weather is good. On and off rain since we've been here. When sun out, very warm. When clouded, can use sweater. Bought alpaca clothing after wet, muddy walk. Mary Noel Nunn brought us back in an ambulance. Stormed at school. Girls won't come today. Try tomorrow. February 17. Praise the Lord, beautiful day. Went to airport at 10 a.m. Watched mission plane coming through mountain pass and landed in front of us. Girls waving and all excited. Joyful reunion, hugs and kisses. Plane and pilot loaded up with supplies we had brought to airport and took them on to Chimore Jungle Site. It was a joy seeing girls go through clothes and gifts from people. Went downtown, bought everyone shoes. Grant drove mission van. What a madhouse, no traffic control, horns everywhere. Grant made plans, weather and the Lord permitting, we will leave Tuesday and go into contact site. We will fly to Chimore first and take supplies to them and then shuttle to contact site at Vibora. February 18, Grant getting his supplies ready to take to jungle with us. Alana and I taking girls to market and try to get sandals for them. Grandma babysat with boys. Church today met many missionaries from various groups. After lunch went to zoo and park. Grant stayed home, Montezuma's revenge. <coughs> getting everything weighed and ready in preparation to fly into Bibora. February 21, planned on leaving, rain delay, maybe Wednesday. February 22, Grant and Jean flew to Santa Cruz to ease up on weight. Alana and Shirley and boys will fly later. Rain delay and plane repairs, no flights today, maybe tomorrow. Night of 22, the Lord watches over his own, Heater caught on fire in Alana and boy's bedroom. Everyone okay. 23rd, plan on leaving, depends on weather. Shirley and Alana flew to in Aztec, met Grant and Jean at Sam Airport outside Santa Cruz. Flew into Bibota in Cessna, beautiful jungle below. Met at Pista Airstrip by Wally and Kurt. Plane left to make second trip to bring in our supplies. All supplies ferried by boat. Very hot and humid. Grant picked us a pineapple. I picked me a banana. Delicious. Wally has lemon tree with lemons, size of large apples. Saw freshwater dolphin. 
saw two parrots, went to bed at 8.30, bred for an hour by lights Grant hooked up by solar to solar-powered battery. Many night sounds in jungle, heat and humidity caught up to me, have to adjust. Started to rain. Mom seems to be doing fine. Rooster crowing at 5.45 a.m. Beautiful sunrise at 6.10. Rain stopped. Heard many splashes in river during night. Grant up at 6.45. Women and kids in bed. We saw a flock of parakeets fly by. Saw four parrots on dead tree across river. Violent storm. Went fishing with Wally and Grant. Wally caught a 15-pound sudubi, also large piranha. Alana washed clothes. Mom watched boys and made stew. Grant mowed yard. Grant, Wally, and I went out in PM. Caught 45-pound catfish on one of Wally's jugs. What a monster. Had sudubi we had caught the day before. I can truthfully say it's the most delicious fish I ever ate including walleye. Very hot and humid tonight. We can hear howler monkeys back in jungle. Grant says that that's a sign of storm coming. Sure enough, it blew and rained all night. 26 a.m., still raining. Church gathering at 10 a.m. at Grant and Alana's house, singing and testimony. Very inspirational, Lord's Supper in conclusion. No sign of you, Key, since last break-off. 27th, heavy rain all night, howler monkeys every night, quit about daybreak, killed chicken, mother defeathered and cooked, Alana doing laundry. Wally and Grant and I went fishing, caught in a deluge about two miles from camp, came back soaked to skin and cold, made fire in trying to do laun dry laundry in house. Chicken tasted good with potatoes and carrots, rained rest of day, Grant at radio trying to arrange the Cessna to pick us up Thursday morning and take us to Tombo. At this time, it's uncertain due to weather conditions. 28th, rained all night and morning. River up about one and a half feet from yesterday. If rain continues as it is, we may have to go by boat, walking, truck, and bus. The same as the girls when they went back to school. We will have to scrub the Tambo side trip and head out to Santa Cruz and then to Cochabamba. Noon, rain stopped, but river still rising. Built fire, trying to dry clothes in house. After supper, Alana and Shirley went to ladies group meeting at Barb's. Grant got radio confirmation on our flight from Tambo to Cochabamba next Monday if we are able to get out of here. 29th. Rain still holding off, but cloudy. River went up again during night, at least a foot, and still rising. Grant and I checked the airstrip. Water on part of runway, but still 310 meters okay, which should be enough for Cessna tomorrow if more rain doesn't come. Cut grass around storehouse. Rained hard all night. Water too high on airstrip. Maybe tomorrow. River very high. Nearly overflowing banks. We won't get out today. Ask if tail dragger could come in instead. Only 260 meters operable now. We'll check 7 a.m. tomorrow with us and advise. Small Cessna can come in at 260 meters, but runway can't be too soft. March 1 a.m. No rain last night. Still 260 meters of runway, but soft yet. They will check at noon if sun stays out, if any improve. If we can get off at least one flight this p.m., surely Alana and kids can at least get out and Grant and I can go the hard way if we have to. Keep praying for noon airstrip check and see if situation improves. River still holding high and not receding. Noon, 260 meters, but sun hardened surface. Joe will come in with small planes and take Alana and kids and Shirley and some luggage not to exceed 150 kilos total. Slog through waist deep water with muddy uneven bottom to get to airstrip. Cheryl fell twice up to her neck, came back both times, smiling and dripping. Our luggage was loaded in canoe with boys. It stayed reasonably dry. Had to leave many things behind to make weight limit. No choice if we wanted to get out. One-third of the airstrip underwater. 
but water on it, clean and drinkable. Boys swam while waiting for plane. Very hot, humid, and buggy. Ladies stripped and put dry clothes on. Joe made beautiful landing just past water and stopped within 50 yards. Can he fly? Took off incoming cargo, put on women and kids, used all available runway, and pulled up just a few feet from water. Praise the Lord. Grant and I and Wally and Kurt slogged back with cargo, which she had brought in, which included sugar, which many were out of. Hot back breaking work. I was totally exhausted from heat when we got back to house. Barb had made us fresh lemonade. Praise the Lord. The plane would be back for Grant and I at 5.30, stopping first at Chimode for Yuki family and some cargo. We could also bring up to 175 kilos on second flight due to less gas in tanks. We threw clothes together. We had to pull out a first trip to make weight, but still had to leave heavier stuff behind, including suitcases and our Bibles. Cross Biwoda and slog back over to Airstrip at 5 p.m. Took off every stitch of clothing and put on dry we had left there on first trip. Gave all my wet clothes to Kurt as he was my size. Joe landed promptly at 5.30, unloaded a bunch of chickens that were almost dead from heat, plus Yuki family with two children. Helped them take out his bow and arrows, which were six feet long. They were dirty, no shoes, and not much more than rags clothed them, but they did have on something. You can't know how lucky we are in states until you see the way they live on practically nothing. Took off. Praise the Lord finally got out of this steaming, fascinating place with bug bites all over us, many while slogging through the swamp, leaving many wonderful people so dedicated to the Lord's work behind, landed in Santa Cruz, 6.30 p.m. Joe, the pilot, drove us to the mission home where we were finally reunited. Shirley and Alana took stock of what we had crammed in on second trip, got most important stuff out, except boys' underclothing. Went out for supper at Outdoor Cafe, the Bolivian, the Bolivian's fiesta prior to Lent started. So much noise and hoopla. A main boulevard runs alongside the mission and two parades came down with bands at 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Not much sleep. I'll take jungle noises anytime. March 5. Left 1 p.m. after tearful farewell to girls. Landed in steamy, hot jungle camp at Chimore, home of Yuki tribe contacted 20 years ago. Everyone turns out to greet plain, friendly, but very unclean people. They have made strides since their naked, savage days. They do wear clothes, although they look like they never wash them. Many know Alana, and they flock to her and hug her, especially the children. Shirley had big crowd around her and everybody trying to outgrin each other. Got some good pictures. Went to Bob and Mary's home, had cold, fresh orange juice from their tree. It was terribly hot. Bob was going to take us on tour of camp, but heat was too much for Cheryl, so she stayed in home of Paul and Sharon while Alana and I went on our tour with Bob. Saw the shelters with filth and garbage, tin roofs supplied by mission. Bob said, I know it looks like very little headway in 20 years, but if you could have seen the way they lived then and now, it's quite a leap. They had no clothes, no shelters, didn't even know how to make fires, nomadic. He said cleanliness is the hardest thing to teach them, especially the older ones, as children are lovable and easier to train in current ways. Met old woman who was wife of tribal chief when first contact made 20 years ago. Saw pig roasting on fire, head, teeth, guts, and all. There's a large banana garden. They also harvest chocolate beans and sell to Bolivians in exchange for trade goods at the post. Saw school for children, half go in the morning, half in the afternoon. Bolivian national teacher. Indians hunt and fish for meat, use shotguns, very battered. Turtles hanging alive from walls, wild baby pig tied up. We left two hours later for Cochabamba with a feeling of compassion for these people when in 20 years have come a long way but still a long way to go. Much prayer needed for the missionaries as they minister there. Grant and boys met us at airport. Good to be back in coach. Everybody fatigued. 
It felt good to get out of the jungle heat and humidity and shower again. When you leave Chimore for Cochabamba, you fly through, not over the Andes. We were at 17,000 feet and many of the peaks were a lot higher than we were. These missionary pilots are the best. Said goodbye to all of our Cochabamba friends and Dick and Lucille took us to the airport at 5 p.m. with Alana and kids. Glad Dick was there as Glad Dick was there as much red tape getting out and he knew the ropes. Cheerful goodbye to Alana and boys. Took off on first step of flight home. If you don't know Spanish down here, you are definitely handicapped. Left for Miami carrying full carry on, full of mail for states. We are both tired, but happy and satisfied with our 23 days down there. I wonder how we'll react to cold weather after all the heat we've experienced the past three weeks. Prayed through customs. Long wait until 2 p.m. for flight to Milwaukee. You can sure tell that you're back in the States. Um, <laughs> so, like I said, Grant's mom and dad weren't big cheerleaders of us uh, before we went. But after they came down, they were our biggest cheerleaders. Um, and that, that was huge for us as their kids and to know that, that they understood what we were doing and why we were doing it and that they were praying for us, um, that, that was really huge for our, our own hearts. And um, how um, Jean, Grant's dad mentioned Dick and Lucille there at the end. Um, we just got news on Monday that he passed away. He was in his 90s and he finished his race so well. It was so cool. He was our field chairman when we went to Bolivia and um, man, we just respected him so much. Uh, he was kind and gentle and a servant and he loved the Lord. And that was so evident in all of our years, our 20 years down there in Bolivia. And um, his wife started having uh, dementia problems. And so they went back home and they were in Chicago and so she was hospitalized or, you know, in a care center. And um, Dick would go see her every day. And he had such a testimony there. He and Lucille would sing together. And for whatever reason, in her moments, she would always ask Dick to sing with her when he would come and visit. And um, so they sang. And it was just such a testimony there. And they had lovely voices, you know. And I mean, I think that's one of the things that just speaks to my heart, how he was such an example of someone who loved the Lord. And it was just so evident in his life. So yeah, we thought it was just having the, per it was, this is not our perspective. This was Grant's dad perspective of what he saw, part of what we were doing. And one day when they were out in the jungle, and he didn't put this down, but one day in the jungle, he went out and to the end of the, where all the bananas were planted near the gift rack and uh, picked a stalk of bananas. And he was all excited about having fresh bananas. And then he told Grant that he had gone out there and dad gave, or Grant gave him the what for. He said, dad, you can't do that. We don't do that without help. And he did not have a sidearm or anything. And Grant's dad was like, oh, it's so peaceful and, and beautiful out there. And it's like, yeah, dad, don't do that, you know. And so we happened to be out in the city a couple months later, or a few weeks later. And uh, the Yuki had come out. And it wasn't a good situation. And we had, were able to make a phone call back to the States here. And um, Grant's mom and dad know what was going on. And his dad was kind of dumbfounded. He said, I was just there and there was nothing happening, you know. And then now the Yuki had come out. And that was kind of the beginning of a lot of long, arduous days of befriending these people and letting them know they could trust us and, you know, the beginning, the beginning stages of helping them understand the gospel. Grant's turn.
She took all my thunder, a lot of it anyways. I didn't realize we, she read my notes. Yeah, get a second. That, that, she, I mean, I, maybe I'll mention it later, but the part when she said my dad was out there, and, um, um, that he wasn't supposed to be. But that's actually two weeks later is when we were shot at by those people. So, excuse me one second. I'm just going to do some of this stuff. I never bring my phone, but I did today because I know there's no clock, and I don't know what time it is, so I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> well, somebody already told us that they're going to leave early, but I'm not going to mention their names, and uh, I'm not going to get them in trouble. So anyways, hang on a minute. I'm sorry. And, and now at my age, you get old, and you start getting your glasses, too. Okay, yeah, I'm going to just share a few verses to start, and then we'll go from there. Uh, first one is in John. You can either listen or you can open your Bible to John 4.35. And I know there's Bibles in the pew. I know you're holding it in your hand with your iPads or iPhones, whatever, or your whatever kind of thing. Um, 4.35. This is kind of appropriate for this time of year, too. Say not, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. <laughs> kind of interesting that right around, all around us, with the harvest. I mean, that Doug's probably been busy. Matt, I think Matt's out there. If I put my glass, I can see Matt. I don't know if there's any other farms here, but it's busy days right now. So... It's just kind of appropriate, but it's lift up your eyes. I mean, the harvest, and that's what it's talking about, you know, just with people. I mean, we got to focus is, is uh, not, I mean, it's not just overseas. It should be right with our neighbors, like we're, we talked about in Sunday school today. Um, and by the way, I'm just a shout out to guys. It's, it's really not that bad, guys, uh, Sunday school class. You know, I mean, we do have a very, growing time, and we appreciate what we're sharing. So I'm just inviting people that, you know, if, if you want to come, you're welcome. You, we don't give out stars. You don't get any extra points in heaven. You just, it's just a good time of sharing. Anyways, back to the harvest. Um, but it's just kind of like reminding us what we're here for. Look up to see people as God looks at them because they're, it's, it's definitely a, um, I'm sorry, my, my phone is doing weird things. <laughs> this is going to be one of those kind of days. Um, lift up your eyes. That's one of the verses. But then I'm, I'm at, eventually going to get somewhere. But I want to read a couple of verses, get these out of the not, It doesn't sound good to get these out of the way, does it? Matthew. Matthew 9. And then pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Another thing. Okay, lift up your eyes, but start praying for for people to go. I mean, it's huge. It really is. Um, we all know that. We know that that's something that God put in the Word that is very important if He put these in there. Matthew 28, 30, 28, 19, you probably all know that one too. Go, into, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These are um, things that are, are important to God. He put them in the Word, and they should be important to us. Um, I know they, they have been in our thing, and I was going to say, like, from what my dad wrote, I hadn't seen that until he passed, or my mom passed away, and we found that. And just see the, that impact that it had on him. And he, like she said, they were not, they, they, they didn't, they just, you know, all of a sudden we come home. I was in the Air Force, hey, Lord's called us to mission work, and we got four kids at the time, four little girls, and you know their first thought is, "You kidding, right?" You know, uh, four kids in a jungle. I mean, you're, you guys, it's it, you know, you, God can use you all other places, but He continued to speak to our hearts. He said, "Hey, this is where I want you to go," so we did, 
And in the training, we, well, we were in the training where, like where Katie is right now, um, we actually had uh, two more kids, basically. So we had six all together, and he never stopped calling us to go to Bolivia, South America. Actually, we switched over. We were heading to Panama, and we ended up in Bolivia. You know, they're close. Um, they're both down south of us. So, um, but, it, it, but that's what God did. He opened up the door for Bolivia with our six kids, and we, we went. And my mom and dad, actually, like she said, they were very supportive. They were some of our biggest supporters after that. But I think it's that unknown, realizing you're going to take my grandkids uh, away. And, you know, to be honest, we, we didn't think of it that way, that what we were doing to our parents and doing stuff like that. But now when we see our grandkids and knowing that they're moving away and taking our grandkids away, well, wait, wait a minute, you know? I mean, that you start to think about that. So you don't realize what our parents are going through. Now, and I, I'm sure that just going to another country even made it worse because you don't hear good things necessarily about third world countries and things. So I'm just saying that to see the changeover once they got there and saw that, hey, God is the same God here as he is there. He's the same God. He's looking at the same moon, look at the same sun. He's the same wherever. Okay. Um, okay, if you look in Corinthians, I know, I know you don't, if I don't hear any pages turning, that's okay. <laughs> I heard somebody's page here. Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, and I've read this once before here. I think. In fact, if I say things that you've already heard, that's what happens when you get old. You can't remember if I already told this story. So, if you've heard this story, you can raise your hand. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop. It just means you're going to hear it again. Okay. Second uh, Corinthians five eighteen through. 18 through 21. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though Christ did beseech you by beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. That's when God really used that to call us. I mean, he's called all of us. I mean, one way or another, we're, we're missionaries. Whether you say you're a missionary or not, doesn't really matter. You're missionaries. It doesn't matter if you're here or you're overseas. The, we go through, we go through, I got things, okay, like, we, we were happy down there. There's happy times down there. You guys have happy times. So what, what, you know, other things, okay, like how about, um, like I said, I got, I, I got my cheat sheet here, so I, I don't, don't want to worry about what you're thinking, but I can't re read my thing. Okay, loneliness. Okay, are we lonely here? You guys ever had lonely times? Yes. We had lonely times there. Like when, when we're all by ourselves in the jungle, I mean, you got your wife, you got your family, but there's still that loneliness, especially at Christmas time. Or like when my, my dad died, when her dad died, when, when Alana's dad passed away, we weren't able to go home. A lot of loneliness there because you want to express something and there's nobody there to do it. You can't hug anybody because there's nobody there. Same loneliness you guys are having right now. No different. If you look at, um, well, okay, I'll just say Hebrews 13.5. Uh, let, let me look it up because it's better that way when you, when you see it. Hebrews 13.5. Did I say 13.5 before? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I mean, even in our loneliness, he's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us. We're here. It's, he's here for the duration. Even, like, I think you can only do this in King James Version. <laughs> but you can read that backwards. Thee forsake, nor thee leave, never will I. Frontwards or backwards. 
God's going to be there with us. Same here in the states, stateside missionaries, overseas missionaries. We're all the same. We're all the same cookie doughs, right? Okay, another one. Um, uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> How can a piece of paper disappear? No. Oh, here it's in my Bible. Okay. Whew. You guys are going to be in for it then. Okay. Um, thankfulness. Another one. Okay. First Thessalonians five eight, eighteen. If you want to look up that one, First Thessalonians. I was, I tease Sean because he likes, he's got everything with him in this little, the tablet thing. I like to hear pages turn. I mean, and he's good at it though. He's, he's going, it takes me longer than him, but he, he's got everything right there. Okay, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ. Okay, you guys are going through things. You're thankful, the same as we are. You're thankful you have a roof over here. We were thankful we had a roof over here. I guess well, all I'm saying in all this is we're the same. It's just a location. You guys are still called. You're still ambassadors. That's what your job is. And a lot of times, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm, really, I'm not. But sometimes we think that, okay, our responsibility is just continue to build relationships with, with people be, be good, just do it. But sometimes we got to get out of the, the be good, gooder. No, but I think I wrote the word down. What am I thinking of here? Oh, good deed doers. There you go. Good deed doers. Sometimes being good deed doers is not enough because they need to hear the gospel we're talking about in class today. People need to hear the, the gospel, they need to hear the good news because. Somebody's got to tell them, and we can be giving them hints along the way and hoping somebody's going to drop something off, somebody else is going to continue, but there's people that we only see once that may never hear anything else. We don't, what I'm saying is don't be, pardon? Plant the, seed. Plant the seed, plant the seed. But I'm saying don't stop there. Go for it. God's not going to get mad at you if you sit down and share the gospel with somebody the whole distance, he's not going to get mad at you. You should not have done that. No. God is saying that's our responsibility. Somewhere along the line, we got to break away from that scared. I mean, somebody, I think it was Robin said, and I, this is good, not bad, Robin. Um, so, somebody, Robin said how it's family is hard, the hardest ones to reach sometimes. And why? If anything, those are the ones you want to be in, the, in, in heaven, don't you? When you're afraid to tell your, your kids, your cousins, your, et cetera, about Jesus, you want them to be in heaven with you. That should be the first people that you want to reach. And that should be our responsibility, not just missionaries overseas. That's our responsibility. And I'm, I'm already off my subject, so just so you know, bear with me. I'm starting to preach again, and I don't want to. Um, fear. Another one. Let's look, look at Luke. Luke 9, Luke 9, 57. No, wait a minute. Got the wrong. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Hebrews 13, I'm sorry. My bad. Hebrews 13, back to Hebrews 13. Uh, 6 and 7. So that we boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Remember them that have rule over you and have spoken. Now, I, this is six. Fear. I remember, I remember the time that, that, that I was shot at. I've been shot at a couple times. An arrow six foot tall. I had fear. I had a lot of fear, actually, at one time, because I was, it was close kind of deal. And, and your first instinct is like, what in the world is God doing? I mean, you kind of bring it back to God, God, I'm not ready to die yet. I mean, it's not, and I'm not making fun of it. I mean, I'm really thinking, God, I'm not ready yet. I, I don't want it this to happen this way. Um, but God says, don't worry about it. I'm going to protect you. Don't worry about it. I'm here. Don't worry about it, period. 
And that's just the way we, you know, I mean, we have fears here. I mean, fears in the States are the same thing. You get out in the, in the road, um, accidents happen. You worry about, or not, okay, I shouldn't say worry because it's not a good word, I guess. But, you know, with your kids, I got little kids, and you hear about, you know, getting abducted and all that kind of stuff. And that can be a weight on people if you start thinking about that all the time. Especially just, you know, instead of saying, God, you are huge. You are awesome. You can do this. Please continue to watch over our kids. But it's the same here as over there. When we went down, when, be, when we overseas, dangers are dangers here or there. What I'm trying, trying to say is <laughs> God is the same here in the U.S., in Yoder, as he was in the jungles of Bolivia. There's no difference in God. He is an almighty God. When he created, the, when he's created, creation, <laughs> I guess I can say it that way, he was doing it for what reason? For us. He wasn't doing it for him. He didn't make creation for him. He prepared it for us that we might have a minister, that we might have, well, let's see, I wish that thing wasn't going, to be honest, because I get off track. <laughs> Turn that off. <laughs> Anyways, now, now, hi, Scott, sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, because I don't like I don't like cameras. Um, yeah. Anyways, I get I get too I get off my subject and I, I get to too many places. But I want to just say to realize that hey, we do have a job, we do have a responsibility. We are ambassadors. We are ambassadors right here, right here in this area, in the U.S in the world. It doesn't matter where we are. That is our responsibility. God said, I want you to do this. And if we don't do that, you don't have to answer to me. You answer to God, okay? There's people that we need to be reaching now. Um, another one, okay, let's how about trust issue. That's a big one because in the jungle, we had different kinds of trust. You guys have trust also right now. And in fact, right now, you, I mean, to be honest, you guys have big trust in your election. Okay. Can you honestly say that you're going to, God, you're going to put that person in there that you want to be in that thing? It's hard, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I know what I'm thinking, and I know I'm not allowed to say anything, but, what? Oh, I thought somebody said something. But what I'm saying then is that, that, Make sure that when you, please vote, everybody. But when you do it, just because you don't like somebody, what is the principles? What are their principles? What do they believe? Do they believe in abortion? Do they be, believe in um, no abortion? I mean, think of the, those things. Don't think of what's going to happen to your pocketbook or who's going to make give you things free, etc. Think of what the Bible says when you decide on who you're going to vote for. Now, I know that I'm... This is just me. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I don't, I don't really want to know. But I know that in a few weeks, we're going to decide. Trust God. We had the same thing. That in Bolivia, a week before the elections, they were not allowed. There was no advertisement. Not, a candidate could not say anything. You know, for a whole week, TVs were cut off, no elections. Nothing like that made people process. But just like you guys, they, they would haul in, they would go, pay, get a guy, take a truck. Hey, guys, want a free meal? They'd haul him in. They'd have to vote for that candidate. they get the free meal, and then they'd haul him back. Well, actually, they didn't. They never did haul him back. They'd only bring him into the town. I'm just saying that's part of, part of you know, we trust in art because when we get there, every time there's a new leader, we'd have to renew all our stuff. We'd have to get a new visa. We'd have to get a new um, a pass, not passport, uh, driver's license. It's only because they, it was a complete turnover of government, and you'd have to do everything all over again. Lines, I, I, oh, you don't even go there. Okay. I'm just saying, trust, we're the same. We're, we're the same people, except we're in a different location. When... Um, Did I already say thanks? Okay, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you for thanks. 
Um, one of the things that we were thankful for is that we even got a chance to go to Bolivia. I mean, let's look at, I don't know if this is the verse or not. I think it is. I kind of crossed things around. Uh, Thessalonians, First Thess Thessalonians. There we go. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians five eighteen. Oh, I did do it. I did do things, but I skipped my notes. Sorry, folks. <laughs> You're gonna have to hear it again. Uh, th thanks. One of the things that uh, um, that was really what we I appreciate is how thankful I am that God, like I taught, said about how protection was very relative, and even with our kids. There's been times that we're thankful that, that God took care of them because when Leanne had her emergency appendectomy, she was stuck in the jungle. Nowhere way to get her out. It was pouring rain. And uh, actually, boy, I, I'll tell the story. i got to start all over. Forget I ever said that, <laughs> okay? My wife's giving me the look like, oh, no. <laughs> Here he goes. Um, should I tell her or not, babe? Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I don't have to. I can just skip. Um, our kids were in Tombo. We had, uh, at that time, there had been four girls who were in Tombo, the school. We, had, we were in the jungle, and school break was coming up, and we were getting ready to have them home, okay? And they, if you had, you might have heard the story. I don't know. I'm trying to make it short. But so Alana was, was getting ready. She was baking cookies cleaning up the house, making it look nice when the girls came because it's something special. The girls come home for a couple weeks, and then they have to go back to school. All Everything was going good. And um, a couple, uh, one day, I guess, it was just a day before the kids were due to come in, we had a plane that unexpectedly came in. And during this time, um, because that's what people, sometimes visitors want to come in and visit, or even a load. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was supplies, but... And for some reason, I just felt that the Lord would have me send Alana. But the boys were out. No, they were with you, right? Okay, the bo and the boys were in the jungle with us. And I just, for some reason, I just said, babe, I think you should just go out and meet the girls in the jungle. And she, she said no. <laughs> and I, and I uh, okay. And then I'm thinking, though, for some reason, and I just felt like, no, babe, I really think you should just meet them. And she said, no, everything, I'm already right here. I got everything. I don't need to go to the city, get supplies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and for some reason, I, I got her on the airplane, even though she was, you know, she's, her hands were against the plane like this, and, and I was pushing her to get her in. <laughs> she finally got in there, and, and less than, she wasn't even in the city yet, and all of a sudden we had a huge storm that came through and just rained, and rained and rained for like I think three or four days, and there's no way that our kids could have got in that day. So she was out there, and the kids went to Cochabamba, the city, and which was really nice. She got to spend time with the kids, but we didn't know that that night when she flew out and the kids flew to Cochabamba, Leanne in the midnightish—I don't know it was how late it was late at night—had an emergency appendectomy. There would have been no way we could have got her out of the jungle. <laughs> there would have been. <laughs> There would have been no way we could have got her out of the jungle and, because there's nothing you can do. You can't, you can't fly in a downpour, and we couldn't have gone out by river. There was things, and God said, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you or take care of her. And so she was out there, had emergency appendectomy, and, it's, it's, and when they say emergency, apparently, I, I, I haven't seen it for a long time, but it's almost like a Zorro cut, you know. It wasn't just like, you know, a nice scalpel kind of thing. It was a mer they wanted to get in. And I don't know if it's the difference between doctors, but it was kind of like she got a, a neat Zorro kind of scar. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying and all that is God knew, didn't he? I mean, God knew that he was going to take care of her. Don't worry. And for some reason, I pushed my wife on the airplane, and I got to eat all the cookies that she made. <laughs> so there's positives both ways. Matthew, our son, when he fell in the river, too, he was two or three, fell in the river. God, for some reason, uh, my co-worker saw him go in, was able to jump in the river and get mad. All these things, God is going to take care of us no matter where we are. It's little by little, it's trusting in him, 
being thankful and fear not. I mean, I'm just going through all these things, but it's we're the same. We're the same people. I haven't. I'm, I, 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 I. This is my personality. I've always been this way. Going overseas didn't change in any. My wife is still the sober one of the family. She is the one that holds us together. She's the glue. I mean, she really is. I'm just kind of the 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 loose on the wall kind of a person. And 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 God knows. He knows what to blend us together with, right? I mean, he he knows that we're the same here. He wants us the same. He doesn't want us to be different, but he wants us to continue to make sure people know who he is. And they're not going to hear it if we're silent. We need to have a voice. Stand up. Share. I challenge you to share with somebody this week. Somebody that you know does not know Jesus Christ. Don't turn to your husband and wife and say, do you know Jesus? I mean, somebody else that you know. Just do it once. See what happens. If they slap you in the face, try it again with somebody else. I'm just saying we need to get off our southern hemispheres and do something. That's what we need to do. <laughs> Thank you. I did have one, another one about, no, never mind, about Robin. But no, that's okay. See, I'll, I'll let it go. But I'm just saying, let's just, just try to remember that spending time with God is great because he's going to lead us in the right direction. I'm not going to keep moving on. I know it's time for the, a song or something, and I know that time's up, basically, I think. <laughs> I, so I'm just saying, hey, let's just have fun, though, and continue to do what we're doing. But for him, make sure every morning, God, how can who bring somebody into my life that doesn't know you? And when he does, don't say and go the other way. Say, okay, this is it, an opportunity. And, and just, yeah, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and pray now <laughs> because I get that way, and I'm sorry, but I do. God made me that way. God made me. Thank you. Thank you. God made me that way, and I'm glad. And I, I know that as I get older, I think it's getting worse, though. <laughs> Let's pray. God, I just want to say thank you for who you are because, man, I am counting on you to redirect all that I said to the right place. God. Your Holy Spirit is uh, uh, a huge part of this, Father. Just, again, just let the words that were needed, the verses that were needed, that, God, that you would just be the one that works in hearts of people. Lord, just wake us up. There's so many things that we could be, be enjoying in life that we're missing. God, just spending time with you and letting you work in our lives. Just help us to stay focused on you. Help us to be willing be able to share gospel with people that don't have not heard or don't even understand. God, just give us those abilities to break out and let you be God. Let you stand with us in defeating what Satan is trying to do. God, just thank you for loving us in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, I believe uh, there's a song now that I, I think up there. I don't think anybody's leading it today, right? Or am I? Am I done? By the way, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We can just sing a song. You want to just sing a song? No, I don't, but I will. I surrender all. Anybody know where that verse is at? I mean, the song is? Two fifty-two. Two fifty-two. Thank you, Julie. Let's just sing the first and the last, okay? Stand up. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's the military. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put it back and give me 20.
Ready? Did somebody start this? Because I'm no good at starting. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. I surrender. Give myself.